As previously discussed, Valve had a Giga Leak, and this Giga Leak went from the majority of their games, from Half-Life 2, Half-Life Source, Counter-Strike Source, Day of Defeat Source, Team Fortress 2, and of course, I'm focusing on Team Fortress 2. It's my favorite game to learn the cut content of, and it really is, for the longest time, had the least amount of available cut content for us to explore until 12 hours before recording. At first, just the map sources for Team Fortress 2 leaked, and during my research through these map sources, a whole bunch of mat and model sources for every other Valve game leaked, including Team Fortress 2. And eventually I'll get to all of that. And within the map sources are not only almost every single released map with all of their viz groups available to be seen, effectively allowing us to reconstruct earlier versions of the maps, as well as early versions of many released maps, but we also had upwards of 20 just straight up unreleased maps. We also have like 45 unreleased levels for Man vs. Machine and its previous version game mode called Raid and Bounty, but we're not gonna really be touching on that today. Let's explore 20 unreleased yet playable Team Fortress 2 levels. Holy shit, let's get into it. Arena Gravel Pit. This is a chopped up version of point C of Gravel Pit, with little health and ammo cut down to allow for the Arena game mode to be played. Arena Gravel Pit never saw the light of day, but this is a fully featured, fully playable map within the Arena game type. Arena was experimented with heavily, and there are many Arena maps that are effectively just tests, including Arena Train Yard 02. We don't have access to Arena Train Yard 1. However, Arena Train Yard 02 is a small building, simple map in the middle of the desert that has full logic for Arena. Arena Train Yard 03 is far more polished. It's larger, and somehow it has no logic for Arena whatsoever. It's effectively just a deathmatch map. It's a larger area. It has more buildings, but there is no logic available, something that could be easily fixed. Valve was very interested in experimenting with Man vs. Machine through its multi-year development cycle, going so far as to create many different types of game modes, such as Tower Defense, Raid, Bounty, and then Man vs. Machine itself going through many iterations before its final version. Bounty is effectively PvP, a standard Team Fortress 2 game type, but players could purchase upgrades from Man vs. Machine by collecting cash that are dropped by players. Your team would share a cash pool. It wasn't really just one person getting stronger than the rest. It truly was a team v team situation. The logic for Bounty is currently unavailable in the retail version of the game. However, now that we have access to V-scripting built right into Team Fortress 2's maps, it could easily be rewritten using V-script. Bot Battle is a simple King of the Hill map, originally used for bot testing. It's just one point with no real game mode logic or health. It could actually be an arena map, but the layout is interesting. It reminds me of a trade map. Capture Point Medieval Mirror is an attack defend medieval map using an early DeGroote keep layout mirrored across the middle of the map, making it a symmetrical capture point map with three three points on either side. Teams would have to compete to capturing both points for the other team's gate to open, allowing that team to win. It's a six capture point game mode type that has never been released at all. Capture Point Nightfall is a completely unreleased five capture point map taking place at nighttime. The basic outline block out of this map eventually was remade and inspired the Capture the Flag map Double Cross. But this Nightfall layout is very different. Capture Point Walker Fort is a mirrored symmetrical map that seems to be an early block out that later inspired to group key. It is again a six point capture mode. They were really experimenting with this 6.2 team capture point mode. My favorite thing that leaked was Dust Bowl 2. Okay, this takes some explaining. Back in 2004 and 2005, during the initial launch of Half-Life 2, many people went back to working on Team Fortress 2, which had to take a break in order to push all hands on deck and finish up Half-Life 2 and ship it out the door. The version of Team Fortress 2 that Valve was working on before Half-Life 2 shipped was internal called Invasion. It was a humans versus aliens type game with a commander class and a lot of different resource collection and base building elements. 
It was complicated, and a lot of the people were just tired of working on it after the incredibly tenuous and stressful Half-Life 2 development time. So effectively, what ended up happening was a lot of people were just like, fuck it, let's remake Team Fortress Classic in the Source engine. And that's what they did. Team Fortress 2 started life as Team Fortress Classic Source. And Valve just kept building on top of it. They straight up took their favorite Team Fortress Classic maps and just ported them directly into Team Fortress 2, scaled them correctly, and then started fixing things, changing things, art passing things, to better represent the game they wanted to make. And Dust Bowl 2 isn't some unreleased sequel to Dust Bowl as we know it. It was Valve taking Team Fortress Classic's version of Dust Bowl and making a sequel for it for Team Fortress 2. This is a time capsule of what Team Fortress 2 looked and played like in 2005. It is the closest thing to the early, early days of TF2 that the public has ever seen. And it is a fully playable map, complete with taking a flag to an enemy capture point, just like Team Fortress Classic. And on that same note, we have Hunted 2. Again, they took the original Team Fortress Classic map, Hunted, which by the way, in itself was kind of a change up of Half-Life's own surface tension. So Valve took the surface tension geometry, turned it into Hunted for Team Fortress Classic, ported Hunted to Team Fortress 2, and then remade it from the ground up polished and arted to look like TF2. Meaning that Hunted 2 is effectively Team Fortress 2's version of Half-Life 1's surface tension. Made for VIP, a cut game mode where individuals had to take a player playing the VIP from one point to another. The VIP had low health and no real weapons to speak of, so they had to defend him. That game mode eventually evolved into payload, but Holy crap, it's so cool to see this. Koth Badwater is an interesting one. This is an entirely unreleased level that takes the opening area of Badwater and symmetrically mirrors it for both a blue and red team, meaning that there is a capture point in the middle of the map for King of the Hill and a massive tunnel that goes underneath it. King of the Hill Dam is an early version of Powerhouse Point 3. Here's a little backstory. Powerhouse, at one point, was a map that was being developed by an individual on the TF2 team back in 2006. It stayed on a hard drive until 2014 when they picked it up and arted it out and finished it up. However, in between the revitalization of Powerhouse in 2006, they actually tried to take a little bit of that map and turn it into a King of the Hill map. It's called Koth Dam. This is a blocked out, early, not art past version of the third point of Powerhouse mirrored and turned into what looks like turbine capture the flag mountain is a snowy map that seems to be inspired by bad water maybe but it's this weird king of the hill map that is very early I, I don't even know what to think about this one it's king of the hill it's snowy it's bad water inspired and it's huge Pinecrest later evolved into Thunder Mountain in some capacity. Thunder Mountain at one point was called Payload Pinecrest, and before that even, it was just called Pinecrest, and it was a payload race map, and it was huge. Pinecrest is the biggest payload race map I've ever seen, going all over the place, above ground, below ground, up into a mountain. It's nuts, and it looks really good. I've yet to play it, but I'm excited to do so. Rock 3 is a map that's in the same vein as Dust Bowl 2 and Hunted 2. It's effectively Valve taking Rock 2, the Team Fortress Classic map, and making a sequel to it. The catch is that for some reason, this one was being developed in like 2009. It's that weird capture the flag variant that was in Team Fortress Classic at one point that involved stealing a key to lock a, 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 like, a like a jail cell and it's fully playable and really arted out and it looks really cool and it's just unreleased. RS Hightower is straight up Hightower. Hightower is something everybody's used to. An incredible amount of brand new game mode map logic. This is an early prototype of what became Special Delivery Doomsday. In this version of the map, a neutral flag would spawn once a minute and a team would have to take that neutral flag and take it to their own capture point. This capture point would be a rocket fueling station. The team would have to fuel their rocket three times, the status of which would be shown on a massive billboard in the middle of the map. 
Whichever team can fuel their rocket three times wins the match, and then another two minute deathmatch mode takes place where their own rocket is set to launch and the other team can stop it if they don't tie in time. So at some point in the development of Team Fortress 2 post launch, the developers wanted to be able to create some kind of tutorial, a really thoughtful single player campaign-esque series of maps that were scripted out to allow the game to teach new players not only how to basically play a class, but understand the different mechanics of said class. They experimented with this idea using Soldier and created five distinct tutorial maps that allowed the Soldier to fully get a grasp on every mechanic that comes with playing the class. Two of the maps, Shoot and Point Breaker, were scripted game modes. Effectively, entire games of Team Fortress 2 on both Capture the Flag and attack defend respectively that were scripted out to the point where the bots would play in a certain way and react to what the game was telling the player in order to teach them how to play. The big caveat is that these maps are fully completed maps. These are actual finished Team Fortress 2 maps that never saw the light of day, that Valve took, changed up a bit, scripted to all hell, and turned into a tutorial mode that had an amazing amount of effort that was then canceled and replaced in favor with a very lackluster tutorial. Shoot and Point Breaker at the current time are not fully playable. An individual would need to go in and remove all the tutorial logic. But these are completed. These are fully art past maps. I just, I, why? Why, why? Why? Lastly is a map that isn't playable. I, I don't know what to make of this one, but the idea is so cool I had to talk about it. Zep Test is a basic test of the idea to make a Team Fortress 2 capture point map specifically attack defend on a flying zeppelin and the point is for blue team to crash the zeppelin it's nothing this map is a nothing burger but the idea here is so cool i i i i, I that's just scratching the surface there are like 45 unreleased man versus machine and raid maps raid is an entirely unreleased game mode that we could somehow reconstruct and then there's everything else that leaked for half-life 2 half-life source half-life 2 episode 1 episode 2 day of defeat source counter-strike source like, I don't, I don't just, you know? I'm Tyler McVicker, the passionate beta gamer boy. I don't know, I'm Tyler McVicker, the passionate gamer! I hope you guys are good. I hope you guys are having a great day, because I sure am. If you want to keep up with all this, please hit the subscribe button. I have a lot of work ahead of me, but I want you to see it. And follow my Twitter and join my Discord to also keep up with the smaller stuff that I may tweet about. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and thanks for watching this video. I'm Tyler McVicker, the passionate gamer. I'll talk to you later. Adios.